Hello everyone, Season 7 came out, I'm going to review it. There's a lot to cover. This is a very good season. Probably the best, I mean, it's got the most content. You know, you've got Taki and then Ferris coming out, surely, which... I mean, Ferris was delayed. Let's not forget that. I'm had to be in Season 6, which... Her being delayed in Season 7 makes Season 6 even worse. Because I think Season 6 was the worst season. They cut the Invasions content in over half. Homeland is the worst DRC card I think I've seen ever. It, it, it's just like how much of a buggy mess of a character he is. Like, like even if I put my personal disdain for that edgelord garbage character aside, it, it is like completely unacceptable buggy mess character. I've never seen anything like it. So that was rough. Just not a good season. Not a good season for content. Cosmetics, just nothing. But season sounds really come through here. You know, like, I'm not even going to cover all the cameo changes. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> let, let me just give, give an overview of the cameo changes now. Because there's so much, I'll just give my general thoughts on them. Because I haven't properly played them all, you know. So, And I don't want to give, like, my proper thoughts on them. I just think they're all cool. And it's, like, over half the roster's gone buffs or new moves or they've gotten reworks it's really cool stuff for the cameos i mean i think gore is much noble at the moment with the cancel your punch thing into the goro walk or the goro grab which you can grab people drawing grabs you can do a throw into a throw it's there's so much insane stuff with that and he gives the best damage in the game right now he has a terrible cooldown though so i don't know how powerful it is i think it's still probably needs nerfing because like, the, the damage is nuts. It's the biggest we've seen in this game. Um, which I do I do fuck with it, though, because it's like, you've got this big boss cameo, and you're getting this big damage. It, it's a cool feeling, but... I, I Again, I don't know if it's balanced or unbalanced. I don't know how to call it down. I don't know how common the massive damage is. Um, I'll have to find out when I, I'm planning to return to Tanya. I'll probably do Tanya. Goro, I know that's I know that's the meta pick, but that's also just a fun duo anyway that I want to try. Um, so I'll find out then, I guess. It, but yeah, it, it's cool. I I know I've seen that fucking Tekken Master guy who was going on about oh how oh Goro is only useful with Kenshi. Um, I, I now he's been proved very fucking wrong, which. <laughs> This is why we got to sell this from the fucking pro players on balancing stuff. I don't pretend I know what's best for the balancing. Just because you're good at the game doesn't mean you know how to properly fucking dance and you have ideas. Some stuff's going to be obvious, like Nerf Chameleon, right? They, they did that. Of course, she needed a Nerf. That's fucking basic shit. But yeah, the people determining what's meta in particular, it's just ignore them. I just ignore them. It, it's fucking... <laughs> It is biased stuff in 90% of the areas. Um, tears don't matter. Your fucking meta cameo combos, they don't matter. Right? Like, just play what you want. You'll get results from them. <laughs> Except for a few duos, I suppose. Uh, not not every character and cameo has synergy, but it is like... You can't just go, oh, this these changes only benefit one character on the whole roster... When you've just been to Evo and you get like eight minutes playtime to test this stuff, and suddenly you got this this fucking guy making a whole ass verdict what to do. So yeah, that's my little rant now. I, I find it fucking stupid how you have these big, not even big are they? Because the pro scene is is obscure in MK really, it, but it's like these are these are names of people who are going to influence opinions. And it, it, it's it's just their own opinion. It, it's still their own opinion. This video is my own opinion. It, you don't get more credibility if you just it, if you've got the game. It, it doesn't necessarily mean you you know balancing stuff. Especially not after eight minutes of playtime. You you can't make that verdict. You really can't. So yeah, I, I'd say it's a bit too early to determine what the what can you actually change at the moment. Um, if the Goro one's too strong, is there any other characters who need attention? I don't know. I don't know that at the moment. I just need to change the call. Cool. Frost in the one, with the Frost Wall, which 
I wouldn't even say buggy, but it, it's an odd choice. I have stuff like projectiles that come from behind, the wall block, which is you know in a way kind of cool. Um, Liu Kang's like fire dragon stuff that flying from behind him, it'll just hit the other side of the wall, right? So that's very cool. You can prevent zoning as well as keep preventing him from walking back, and that's that's cool. On the other hand, you've got Ermac who has his ghosts, his ghost spirit things, and you summon man next to the wall in your in your wall corner combos. They don't work because the wall blocks them. The, the ghosts just get trapped in the wall, I guess. And that's one that's like that's that feels weird, right? So I I, I feel it needs to block and I don't know how they'd program it, but I feel it needs to block like opponent stuff, just to make that move even better. Uh, but also um not block players own stuff like that. So they can do actual corner combos. Um so I hope that's what's get, what gets changed. I've also seen some cool stuff like you can actually some guys can actually knock people over the wall. Johnny can do that, and then he can like build high meter doing his taunts or whatever while the wall's still up. And that's that's really cool. It's just really cool stuff. And and I will let you corner combos from whenever. Uh, as well as some other tech stuff. It, it's very creative, very cool, and I'm excited to go back to playing Frost. Who I frankly haven't played that much. At least because she was my main in MK11. My username is based off her. She's my deadly alliance main. <laughs> you know, so you think I'd play her more, but I haven't. Um, but the ice what I probably will. At the moment, I'm just trying to master the character I haven't mastered yet. Um, so I'm sort of limiting what pairings I do. I plan to do a seasonal tower, I'll master them, then I'll probably give everything a go. Which is why I'm not really getting too deep into the changes and stuff. I know Matara's a you can control his teleport. I know Jax. Jax's projectile got buffed and whatnot. Um well, so I, I guess the other big thing that was notable to me was um Darius. Darius's new low. That can also combo into this really cool move where you flick where he flicks the opponent up to the air, and then you and the player do like a shoulder bash together. This move was actually revealed in the files months ago, weirdly. It's been in the files for months, and it's got like a brutality icon. This meant to have a brutality to it, which is why Darius is missing a brutality, which makes me wonder, how old is this move? It's really cool to have it, but I'm like trying to think, it's like, was this in the game from the start? Because they, they love to drip feed content, are they trip feeding moves? I don't know what's going on there, but it's just cool to have it. Um, Darius buffs are just really cool. Probably my favorite part of this because his spin kicks, you can charge me. You can jump cancel off the uh, double whammy uppercut, um, which you could anyway. But it's like the the uppercut jump cancel that costs two bars me, which also got a buff, but I still don't think people will use it really. Especially not when you've taken it from Darius, who can just jump normally now. Um, so that's taken away like the one cool thing in that mechanic, that, that little obscure gimmick. Um, which is interesting, but I mean, it's better for Darius, I suppose. You can jump cancel without spending a meter, so that's good. So yeah, just really cool diary stuff. I, I I want to... I think the first thing I want to do when I master the carriers is just play Havoc Darius. Um, get Havoc to level 35 doing that duo. And then, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'll do after that. But that, that is my plan because that team's extra good now, which is cool because, you know, more reasons they're an actual duo. So that's always been a cool, cool team. Um... So yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, so that's the carrier stuff. The carrier stuff's cool. Of course, Ferris here as well. A lot of tall stance stuff. Very cool. It's also nice to get releasing alongside Takeda. Or Takeda now. I'm just going to say Takeda because, frankly, the pronunciation, of, the pronunciation of so much stuff in this franchise is just fucking wrong. Where it's like, you, you, why are you trying to create yourself on this one thing? It doesn't bother me, but it is weird. Um, there's even like scrapped intro dialogue like Johnny 
you know, you say Takeda, I say Takeda, and they remove that because canonically it is Takeda now. And it's like, that is correct, to my knowledge, to my white-ass knowledge. Um, Take- I just know Takeda is, is, is not correct. Um, but, like, you, you still call the Shirai Ryu the Shirai Ryu, which is, I, I think it's like the Shirai Ryu, isn't it? Like, you're, you're just saying Ryu twice. That's that's so dumb. It is such a dumb pronunciation. And you keep that, but Takeda's too far? Like, it's it, fucking weird, but it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter to me. I don't care. Um, Farrah, cool. Very cool cameo. I like the brutalities. I like. I just like the torso. It, it, it's, it's such a great idea. It's such a great idea. You, because, I mean, just as fair as an assist carry in general, it's one of the best ideas you can have. Like, that's something there with Mataro, I feel. As, like, those of you must have cameo picks. They're not my favourite. Um, I like them both, of course, but not my favourite. No one like guys like Shajinko on the roster, but. In terms of who you're going to want on a, a specific, specifically an, an assist roster, those are your two guys. Because Matara, you can't program as a centaur. But you can, you know, work around it with a cameo. And Ferro, of course, was the original assist character with Tor. So you pick Ferro and then your character becomes the new Tor with the Tor stance. And you get all these cool abilities. You get pain in game. You can also have it on the sidelines giving you meter buffs. It's just really cool. It's really cool. There's a lot of depth to the stance thing. Which, if you haven't played Farrah, it's... She has, like, the sideline thing, and she has Tor stance. She needs to be on your shoulder in Tor stance to do the attack. So you can, you can still combo out. You can still do combos from it. Like, you can go into Tor stance, and if you're quick enough, you can still do the hit, and it counts as a combo, right? It, it isn't like going into Tor stance, um, then ends the combo. So that's fine. Um, but basically, all her moves are just in the Tor stance. So the Tor stance is all her moves in the sideline thing, which she can also jump on you from the sidelines. There's a lot. There's a lot. She's very cool. Her redesign is really good as well. Because I, I, I feel like you... you Look at her on it on her own. Because she's so tiny and you know Tor's obscuring her as well next. You don't really realise how questionably sexualized her design is. She's in a bikini and shit. It's fucking weird. And they changed it to be like actual like warrior armor. She's got like a fur coat and shit. It is rad. She looks rad in this game. Also, I didn't realise she was white. I I, I that, this isn't whitewashing. This game isn't whitewashing. I'm going to accuse her of that. Um, it's just MKX's lighting is so dark. I, I thought she was at least tan this whole time. Um, but, but apparently not. Um, it, it's nice to get a good look at Ferret anyway. And what she's supposed to be. Because really fucking, real fucking hard to make out in MKX. Um, so yeah, Ferret, I'm very happy with. I think she was a must-have on the cameo roster. Just in terms of the concept. Because she is the original cameo, if you really think about it. So, it's cool to have her. Cool to have her alongside Takeda. You know, the MKX newcomers are breaking in here, which is it's the one thing I like with the DLC. And of course, I'm considering the data mines is, is what we'll get. Um, where there's no more 3D artifacts, which is lame. It is lame. I think there should have been at least one if you're trying to set this standard of. Oh, we're doing free year fight returns. And they have actually done they've done less than X and Eleven's DLC has for free air fighters in terms of fighters, not cameos. Um I don't count Quan Chi because it's meant to be for the base roster, and also it's Quan Chi is in pretty much every game. Quan Chi is not this big bold choice. He's more popular than most of the arcade characters, I feel. I mean, not popular maybe, but like he's more prominent. Um Someone has a really can also again he was meant to be for the base roster. Um But what I do like is but because the free era character slots just basically took over the MKX newcomer slots, not just MKX, just the NRS era trilogy of newcomers. Which I do think is the weakest era of newcomers, but there was there was no more like, issue with NRS's creative decisions, because their newcomers are always cool. Um even if 
they weren't written particularly well. Uh, so, so it's just good to get them here. You know, Takeda... Takeda missing out on MK11 was fucking stupid. So it's long overdue. The problem now is they've rebooted again. So they've had to retcon him into being Kenshi's cousin. And it's it's really dumb. I'm not interested in it. They've also made it more of like this aggressive vigilante character. It, it, he is literally just Daniel's Kenshi, but weirder, really. Like, it's the whole lone wolf, fucking stubborn, dickhead sort of character. And it's weird. I don't know what to make of this character. He lacks personality compared to X. And his law. His law would be fine for a new character. It, it absolutely would be. But it's Takeda. You know, you, you can't just. You can't just change the son against you to being a cousin. That's, that's too jarring of a change. I just can't get behind it. Much like I can't get behind Quiet Anger Scorpion. Raiden as a, as a mortal, Liu Kang as a guard, fucking, it's all dumb. It's all dumb to me, on equal levels, stupid. Um, so, yeah, I I don't like, I came from a writing standpoint, um, which I was expecting anyway. It, it's just, can't get behind it, it's not dick either. But, at the same time... <sighs> You know, she was to do time travel stuff regardless, which I think he should have done. Made, made him a time traveler. Um, coming into this timeline and the cover up story is he's a distant cousin. I like that theory. I think it's fucking tacky, but it'd be better than just having a character that has nothing like Takeda in, in terms of narrative. In terms of gameplay and design, he's a brand. Um, I do have one issue with his design, and that goes to Gear. I'll get into that, but since I'm on on about story let's go with the ending because this is the first like mk character ending we've had uh since after launch because quan and ermax were in files because again quan Chi and ermax were very blatantly meant to be on the base roster like very obviously where's Takeda is an actual dlc character our first one a year later and his ending's interesting. I just don't like Takeda the character. And I think he has no chance of taking on the Red Dragon. Not alone. Um, Sue Howe would fuck him up, probably. <laughs> like, he just doesn't really have a chance. Um, but it reveals Movado and Dagon in the new era. Which is very cool. Dagon was special. I was expecting Movado. Um, I, I, I had a feeling they'd pick this up. And also, there's just the, the general feeling right now is Movado is in the next game. They'd be fucking stupid to drop the ball on Movado right now. He is probably top three most played cameos right now. Like Chameleon and him, they are very popular. Even as cameos behind a paywall, they are played a ton. Um, like it's them and Serena, right? All big returns to the cat, making it in through cameos. And I think they're going to move up to the base roster in the next game. Which is why you don't get rid of cameos. Because they're going to do this for characters. They're going to bring them back into playable status. And it just adds more roster variety in general. Um, that's what I'm hoping. I really hope the roster doesn't fumble it. And the, and the roster's going to be hard to do because... They don't increase the base roster size. And this game has a lot of characters still in the narrative. That would be weird to write out. Which MKLM had the same problem. But I, I feel you bring Nevada in. I don't even think the key is going to be in the next game, quite frankly. I don't think he will be. Um, like, I, do, I don't see them following up on this story. They always drop ending stories. However, what I do think is likely to happen is that you've set up the Red Dragon in this timeline. They will be featured in the next game. That is my assumption. Mavado, at least. I feel Dagon also has a strong chance. People have wanted Dagon... Um, he's been quite a highly requested for year character. Um, I, I say he's up there, not as close to, but he, he's definitely probably like third behind Dramin and Hotaru. Two guys who should also be in the next team. I don't know if they will, but I think there's an obvious assortment of 3D out characters that are popular um, to keep around. they they got to keep the 3D out characters going. Um... So that's what I'm excited about. And also, like, 
narratively, I mean, Dagon's not really redesigned. He, he, they, t he doesn't have his graying hairs, but he hasn't had that since, like, the comics took them away. I think they do it just to make him, like, a bit more superficially cool, which I don't think you need to do, because the Red Dragon is already awesome. Um, I know Su Hao gives it a bad rap, which is unfair, because Su Hao is also really cool, in my opinion, but people look at PS2 era goofy character model, and it's like, oh, no, 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 dog shit character. Um, and then, frankly, I hate, like, Su Hao was not in this ending, and, and that further suggests to me that, oh, they're, they're planning to bring the Red Dragon back. Because they're trying to cut off the, the stuff that is considered uncool about it, which I disagree with. But, like, I feel you've got a strong chance next game. Mavado and Dagon on the base roster. Su Hao has a cameo. If cameos stick around, which that's probably less likely. But if they do stick around and Su Hao cameo is simultaneously a lock in, then. That 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 would be fucking rad. You do just that, and I'm buying the game. I'm buying your next game if you do that. <laughs> it doesn't take me much. Um, but I'm running ahead of myself because NMS loves to drop stuff. Again, again, I I, I don't expect this story to be picked up, but I do feel like it, it's pretty clear that at the moment, at least, they want to bring Ravado and Dagon back. I think that is pretty clear. Um, Likewise, I think our Narg is coming back in the next game as, as the boss. Which I... <laughs> everyone keeps teasing a big surprise. I, I think it's just like an Onaga reveal in the story. Like, at the end, you, you, you tease his return or whatever. That's my assumption. But also, I, I thought that for the <laughs> the base story, so I don't know. Um, I don't want Onaga back, personally, because he, he won't be playable. So I don't get that as, as a perk. And he'll just... Villains in MK fucking suck now. They get no feats and they just lose on the last chapter. And so it's completely unmemorable and it will completely bury Onaga's legacy or just kill his reputation like they did with Shinnok. Who, if Shinnok hadn't come back in MKX, you'd have people clamoring for Shinnok. So, so it's like, I, I don't want that. I'd rather they give new villains. I know Kronika sucks, but I'd rather that than, oh, who's Onaga? <laughs> we ruined him. If Onaga's playable, then then I'm more open to it. Because I think like a, a modern Onaga... Because he's never got a proper playable moveset. Um, of course, he's been playable in Armageddon. But it is a, a boss character moveset. There's a lack of depth to it. It's very cool to play as him. But, you know, they flesh out his moves and stuff. That would be a very cool thing to see. And also see him get costumes. There's a lot of interest in that. As just as just a story boss, I don't care. I, I don't care because I don't care about the narrative, and they would not do an Arga justice. Um, but that's a side tangent. I don't know why I brought him up. Oh, because Dagon and other villains, sure. Um, but yeah, like in the ending, they show up in this meeting with like all the crime family heads, and it's revealed that the Red Dragon just controls them all. Which I, I fuck with. That is a very good lore addition. That is a very good addition to the lore. Um, it, it, it seems an iconic as here, like, like the Red Dragon working with other criminals being just on top. They just, they're at the top of this criminal empire, you know? They're just pulling the strings of everything in the world. That is fucking insane. That is really cool. I'm a massive fan of that. That's a very big feat and definitely one that the Red Dragon can achieve. Because the Red Dragon are your main threat. They're your main Earthrealm threat, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and, and giving them a feat like this, even if it doesn't translate into a game, because you're not. It's not like next game you're going to have the fucking. They're not going to show up with like an army of Yakuza or whatever. It's just going to be Red Dragon members. <laughs> Which I, I, I think is fine anyway. I'd rather this be a, a lore tidbit and you focus on the Yakuza, because. Morecambe can do so much more than just, oh, here's this real criminal group. <laughs> when, you, when you have the dragon clans doing all sorts of crazy shit, there's just no room for it. And I think it's good that they changed that. <laughs> In Files, they bring out the Yakuza rather than the Red Dragon. So I think they changed that. And maybe it was a response to Mavada's reception. I don't know. Um, but it does feel like to me that they're, they're actively making plans to set up the Red Dragon, and that is very exciting. Um, 
the black dragon meal hasn't been set up at all. So maybe the next game. I I, say, I, I, I was thinking brings both the dragon clans back. Um, but it might just be the red dragon. And I'm cool with that. I, 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 the black dragon can sit out for longer. I don't care. Um, but it is cool. Um, so, yeah. And then, like, Dagon's here. They've got Karo chained up in Charred Mountain still. They, they, they adapt this to the next game. Then it is just a red dragon clan. It, same as the old. The only thing that changes Dagon from Outworld, I guess, now. Um, there's also an interesting dialogue where Rain's like, oh, Day I have a half brother called Dagon, so is he not a god? Um, or are they actually the sense of Argus and Delia? Or are Argus and Delia just separate from them now? Which, in that case, <laughs> what's going on? Is Dagon, does, is Dagon just a regular criminal who's going out of his way to enslave Caro? Right, like, like, ra rather than, oh, he's been put in a static mind, and he's just this angry boy. Um, like they might change, they might change how they got into that point, which I'm not interested in because that is another clear example of the new era. Just because of how stuff has changed, you sort of have to, you want to do the same stuff with the characters or similar stuff because these are cool characters. You don't want to divert from that. For most of them, for most of them, but then the backstory has to be watered down and made less interesting, and less personal, for the sake of the new era. And that's like. There's no point in it. Um, that was my only worry there. Um, and also my worry is Dagon Day will just show up in the story and be a jobber. They're not going to protect Dagon. <laughs> Mavado too. Mavado will just job out. He will be the Reiko of the next game. Um, assuming they go this route. Or they just don't have him in the game at all. <laughs> that would that'd really fucking suck. Um, so I don't know. I know, but it's cool. It's cool. I like it. I don't like Takeda. I just like the prospect of getting the Red Dragon back in the next game. Because the Red Dragon rules. And the Red could very much ruin him. Um, but, I mean, they did good with Mavado. They did very well with him. So, I don't know. That's just see it. Eight years when we get Mortal Kombat 2. <laughs> Fucking, oh, please don't call it that. But yeah, in terms of gameplay, the key is awesome. I, again, I don't to get too in depth with it because I just like his moves. He's got good combos. I like the trap stuff with the mines. I'm not good at him. He's got air combo extensions. He's got everything. He has everything, and it's very cool. No pulse plays, but I'm fine with that. Um, the pulse plays are always a bit random for him anyway. Um, I don't think he needs them because he needs the whips and his... Uh, Shuriken, Explosives, uh, which is very cool in this game. Um, but yeah, he doesn't need a pulse play, especially in a game that has reduced a lot of weapons. What I do expect, however, I don't even expect it, but like, I, I hope you give Sector the Jewel World pulse plays back. Go on, do it, please. Because I mean, like, like, of course it's been a while since Armageddon. However, Set it out to be playable in the NRS game properly in MK9. And MK9, everyone was fucking lame and had no cool extra kit stuff. So I don't think that means that they want to get rid of the pulse blades. In fact, the key of all people had pulse blades, I think they kind of want to keep them around. And I, I feel like there's a good chance you get Sector with them. Maybe not Sarge, because they probably want to focus on her having a, a saw blade weapon, I suppose. Again, they're not going to change like the cyber, the, the basic cybernetic weapon stuff. How, how they work will be different because they're not proper cyborgs, but they, like gameplay wise, you will have them all and they'll do what you expect, really. Um, so I'm hoping for that, but yeah, I, I like Takeda. Uh, really cool. My second favourite DLC character, probably. Um, at least in the gameplay and design area. Of course, behind Quan Chi, because Quan Chi is... He's so fucking... He's so fucking perfect. I love Quan Chi. <laughs> um, yeah, Takeda, Takeda's pretty good. I, perfect gameplay. I, I think the default design is pretty perfect outside of the year. Um, just, I'm not interested in the lore or the story stuff. But again, there's very few characters in this game that I am interested in. Andrade. Again, I've, I've sort of given up on the story. I'm, I'm still... 
I still have an interest in it because it's something I care about. And when they fuck it up, I'm going to complain about it. Because um, it does matter. I, I'm I'm in the mindset of, oh, story doesn't matter if I enjoy the game. But the story does matter. It doesn't matter. And I think the people who, who downplay that are, are fucking dickheads. So I'm not going to be that guy. I'm not going to do that. Um, even if, yeah, my, my interest in the, in the story is <laughs> basically non-existent. I don't, I don't really care what they do narratively. I care more about how do you get a cool roster that has 3 d characters come back in the next game. That's what I'm more interested in. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. The key is cool. Let me go over what my issues with the design now. And let me say it's not an issue with the palettes. These palettes are so good. They are really, really good. I like them all. They're very fucking good. It's really nice to get some colour schemes with them. And yeah, the, the costume itself is my favourite Takeda design. I think it plays all those MKX costumes. Um, so that's good. Again, I, I'm quite fine with just having this costume for Takeda. Because I, I don't really need much more for him. My issue comes with the gear, though. Um, also, in, in the story script league, um, there is a Chaos Takeda. So he'll, he'll get a Chaos costume. But that will probably look weird if I were to guess. It might look cool. You know, I, I feel like Takeda could rock like a Chaos round fit. But it would be a very, a very random one, you know. Um, but that's something I'm interested in. Because um, I'll probably be, you, you buy a story, but you get this bonus costume for Takeda. That's what I'm assuming they do. And I, I, I'm cool with that. There's two more masks in this, but uh, this is the only image I have. But <laughs> this is my problem with the gear. Nine out of ten is just masks. And then one has him maskless, but it's with a weird eye patch. And not a headband that has any details, just something, it's just an eye patch. I don't know why it has an eye patch. It, it, I, it's somewhat grown on me, but it, yeah, it, it's not what I wanted. I, what I wanted with the whole headband and mask changing is you have half the options, or at least a couple, you know, give them the maskless option. Um, and frankly, now that I think about it, you could have just given him one with the with the one the sure are you headband, which was based on his original one, his original headband that they sort of replaced. Um, you could have just kept that because there's an asset you have. It's there. It's on the NPC Takeda. You could have just took that on a maskless Takeda, and then you have then you have another gear piece, and that'd be a very popular one because it's faithful to original Takeda. Because the main thing isn't the mask. It was in the Shirayu variation, and it's intentionally a Scorpion reference. So making it the most the most prominent part of his gear is weird. It's very weird. And this is not a knock on the, the gear. I like all the masks. I mean, this one needs a bit of work, let, let's, let's be honest here. But the others are very cool. But yeah, it is just a shame to, to not have just a proper maskless version, you know? Um, because I again, it's the eye patch just sort of overshadows the mask a little bit. And if it's an all headband, I'd be fine with having just one option, frankly, because again, you got all the different masks, there's more effort than just having maskless options. So, if you want to do just one maskless option, that's fine, but you don't do something out there with the eye patch when people want the maskless version for a more faithful look of tequila. Um, so that's a shame. Maybe Chaos to Keys is, is is just like just has like a headband and a maskless look. Maybe they do that. Maybe that's how we get it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I do hope for something like that for Takeda. But again, I really like this DLC character. Worth the wait. Ferret is cool. It's cool to play as the two MKX characters simultaneously. Um, you know, I, I, again, I like with the elite DLC, right? It's, it's sort of an underwhelming selection. Um, they're all characters I like, of course, but it's like there's not even a single 3 d character or a big return like Kentaro. Feels like a miss. But at the very least, they, they do seem to be bringing back the NRS newcomers, giving a good amount of them. Okay, we just got two now. A Tremor kind of counts. Of course, there's Garrus on the base roster, which again, that sort of replaced the. The 3D era version of, oh, who is uh, your one 3D era rep? They sort of swapped places in that regard. 
and I prefer the free air new comments, of course, but um, it, it is a bit unfair. And, and the DLC focusing on that, I do appreciate. I do appreciate that. Um, I just think that is the most important bit bit to do. Um, again, I come to my most anticipated DLC. Uh, it would be weird to have the game with Dakida and not Jin. Um, and Cast DLC is kind of weird, but. Think of all the cameo pairings, that's going to be very fun. I think she's going to be a character that seems bland on paper. Not a knock on the character herself, just the fact that she's been in the past two games already. It's not it's not an exciting return or anything. I think she'll be made exciting, you know, through the cameo options, which applies to a lot of the, the, the regular mainstay characters in this game, I feel. Which, again, is another benefit of cameos, where you can have even more, more typical, less exciting reps on the roster that aren't very unique you can make them unique with a cool cameo pairing so yeah i'm excited for that sector of science i'm excited to see what they do getting them playable again is longer with you they should have been playable on the base roster i feel um because i remember being upset that they were cameos which i i still want to solve the wrong call i feel like they could have done tri-walk it, like if they were going to make them dlc anyway they could have probably just done tri-walk um and then had room for an extra character as a cameo instead of the repeat ones. But if they're going to be drastically different to their classic selves, cameo versions does actually make sense. Um, and then Noob. Noob and Jade. Uh, Jade isn't the one I expected for the base roster. She, she fits in with the rest of the roster, but not an exciting pick uh, on paper. And Noob's just one who doesn't need to be there. And if you'll say, oh, we got all the ninjas with them. We don't. Tremor's a cameo. And and Chameleon's not in the game at all. So we don't. We, we don't get all the ninjas. Um, Noob's very cool. I, I, I know he's fun in every game. Um, so I'm interested to see what I'll do. I think they could get very creative in this game with all the shadow stuff and whatnot. It's going to do crazy stuff with Ermax telekinesis, I imagine, or do a lot of cool stuff with Noob. But it is like you're coming from MK11 in a game where you don't really have a place. You'd make more sense as a cameo since Bihan is Sub Zero. You, you'd fully fit a cameo slot, and also then you can do Smoke and Noob. Um, and you're showing up on the base roster. Well, not the base roster, but the main fight roster, the DLC, I'm sure. Um, and you're not going to have the customization of McKillen, far from it. And, you, you know, it's not relying on him having a really cool moveset, because narratively he's going to be boring. We know it's just Bihan again, which is dumb. I'm not going to say it's, oh, you've wasted a slot there, because Noob and Sub-Zero have always been distinct characters, um, regardless of if, if it's two Bihans on the roster. That doesn't matter outside the narrative. Like, on the roster, it's still Sub-Zero and Noob. It's not Sub-Zero and Cyber Sub-Zero, let's say. Um, very distinct identities. Um, but it is like, what's the point? Other than, oh, news popular. So make a quick buck. But then you've got like guys like Kentaro, a very, <laughs> a character older than Noob and Jade, uh, a, a, a character who is very iconic and universally liked. There's, there's not, no one dislikes Kentaro, and the only people who do are fucking salty jade stands uh, who hate every other character now. Um, so where's Kintaro? I'm not asking for an out there free air ref. I'm asking for fucking Kintaro. <laughs> That's not a big ask. <laughs> I really don't think that is a crazy request. But hey, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, at time recording, you know, tonight, for me, uh, at 10 p.m., I, I'll find out what the story's patch is. I have 35 quid. I have 35 quid on my Switch account. NRS, do not fucking overcharge this. 35 pounds is already overpriced because it's, it's half the characters. Do not make it more expensive than that, NRS. I am begging you. I am begging you. I just want to I just want to give you my money. I just want to play a sector. Just... Leave me there. Just, please. <laughs> um, I, I am kind of excited. I am kind of excited. I, my, I feel like when I get to the trailer, it's, my excitement is going to be um, ruined by 
seeing any story footage. Because again, I, I just want to see the characters. I, I really like the game. I want to see the cameos, man. I just want to see the gameplay and the designs. It's, I don't, I, I, I don't want to see the weird story stuff. Maybe just to see what the new designs are. Because that's the one thing I'm thinking. Because it's going to be £35, pound, but in a game that has like microtransaction stuff, they can pack it in with a good amount of skins. And that will actually give it some extra value. Um, which is it's very scummy, but it, it will go into my consideration if I buy the full pack or just individually get the characters and the cameos and whatnot. Um, I'm just hoping it's £35, which the current pack is £35, which is a bit more expensive than in Killen, which is why I, I feel like they might up the price a little bit. But at the same time, the £35, price, £35 price tag in Ashmath made no sense to begin with. So going higher than that would be ludicrous, especially if they've got another kit. I, I expect the full combat pack too, which might be revealed simultaneously. Um, I don't know. I do not know. Um, but that'll be another £35 pack if it's another six character pack. So that's <laughs> that's a lot. That is a uh, over £100 of DLC, which actually come to think of it, yeah, that is, that is fucking in, that's insane. Um, no matter if you can get the base game for very cheap anyway. At least on Switch you could. Um, that's the reason I have it. That's the reason I have it. I didn't want it. I didn't want to take the risk on that. But uh, it paid off. So I will give you, I will give you money for the DLC. Just, you know, you've already taken the piss for £35. Don't. <laughs> don't push your NRS. Please. But, yeah, I, anyway, I am excited. It's just, I, I am worried about the price tag and, of course, the story stuff. It It is not an ideal pack. However, it is, I will say, it is cool to have a pack that presumably won't have a guest character. That is nice. When that update comes, you yeah, the DLC, and it's going to be like, oh, Sector Cyrex and Noob on the roster in one update. That is going to be a very exciting time. Um, so yeah, I, I, I will give you money for that NRS. Just don't fucking make it even more expensive. Please. I'm begging you. Um, but but yeah, I, I, that's coming 62 days, but with season 8 is my theory. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about season 7 now and I'll get into what I think of for the future seasons, and that should do it for this video. So, season 7, I've seen a Soul, Soul Eater. This is Soul Seater. Um, this is my favourite season, thematically. Um, probably in terms of skins, still, it, again, it's following season 6, which has less, a lot less skins, but this one feels like it actually does have quantity over quality. No, quality over quantity. Um, which was what people were saying to defend Season 6, which I just fucking disagree with wholeheartedly, because you had characters like Gyrus that just had a shade green recolor, not even the scales, even a crocodile. Fucking crocodile. Where is my crocodile skin in RS? Where is it? it just, just, like, like, it was not. It was not quality or quantity. You had the same amount of um, model change skins as you normally would. There, there was no extra quality there. This season, however... You have personalised model changing skins, but you have different patterns. I mean, most in the same pattern, but the accent colour for that pattern matches the character, which, again, is very small. It's very small. That is such a minor thing to be hyping up. But it does mean that a lot of the skins actually fit the character. I don't like the Undead saying. I like the Undead saying because... That's a common thing in MK. And the, the 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 undead look for this is like a mix of revenants and zombies, which is kinda neat. I like the blend of that. Um the the air sheet doesn't really do it justice because it just makes everything look green and that's not exactly right. Um But yeah, like like, like look, you see like blue on a sub zero and yellow on Ashra, for example. Those are like the extra patterns, the accent colours to, to match the characters better. That's cool. The base costumes are actually probably my most exciting part, though. The base costumes are just red and yellow and black, right? Red and black, yellow and black. 
So Shang Tsung's main colours, I guess. Yellow and black, of course, like a classic Shang colour, which is uh, very cool. It, you know, vibrant, you know, vibrant red. I know we had a black and red season, which I didn't play, but I've looked in the files. Well, not in the files myself, but I've looked in MK Warehouse, checking out the skins. And it's like, it's a very different shade anyway. So it's like, I, I don't, I, I don't think they're different enough. Um, and of course, the yellow and black one stands out quite well. And when you've got a nice color scheme here, not a weird one, it does fit with a lot more of the roster um, than usual. Still not everyone, but this is good. Like, like if you're going to have a set season theme, this is how you have one that fits a lot. Kind of just, I praise season four skins, which everyone here because, oh, it wasn't Melina themed. I just think people now realize that the, the, the Titan boss does not have to reflect the theme. Um, season 2 did not reflect Natara at all, and no one complained. Va vampires do not have fucking grey skin and, like, red paint on them in, in the MK universe. That had nothing to do with vampires. It had stuff to do with blood, which Natara's association with, like, a hybrids have an association with Melina, but they're not Melina skins. They're hybrid skins. And here you've got, like, these undead skins, not Shang Tsung skins, but, of course, like, the yellow and black, that's a Shang Tsung reference, which is cool. Shang Tsung looks sick with it. This is really cool. Shang Tsung has so many cool pads. This is not part of seasonal pads, but the gold order type of Shang look beautiful. Great. And you got the undead ones. Very cool as well. Very cool stuff. Union of Light Shang finally getting some seasonal palettes. Good to see. I will very clearly do a complaint now about the glitches oh, on top of Shang because they ruined Deadline Shang. They took out the Sassage and what. I spent money on this. I spent real fucking money on this. Thanks, NRS. Um, people also spent money on Quan Chi and Ermac. They're unplayable on Xbox. They T pose and stuff. It is the funniest glitch I have ever seen. But it is unacceptable. That is ridiculous. I am very fucking sick and tired of this, NRS. A big complaint I expressed over last season was I have this big issue with the seasons and how when the season starts, I have to go out of my way to check if they actually fix anything and if they and what is broken now because each season breaks more stuff. So there's just this endless cycle of juggling different bugs, which is why I'm actually quite excited at the prospect of them ending the unique seasonal themes so they can slow it the fuck down and actually start to polish this goddamn game. It's only been over a year in, and we're still getting drip-fed content, and now you've got fucking unplayable Quan Chi and Ermac in fucking T-Pose combat. And Homeland is still buggy. <laughs> he's still buggy now. It's, they, 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 he's had like three patches, three separate patch updates to him. It, it, what a mess. What a mess, man. I, they even don't play test the game. Or because they rush out these seasons. You know, what are bros fucking forcing them to? They can't patch things in time, so they release updates, which, which is a fucking insane fork. They release updates knowing that you have broken characters like Quan Chi and Ermac. Luckily, it's not on Switch. Switch, my issues, that show up, they're just to do with visuals, right? So much stuff breaks. <laughs> I mean, just look at this. They can't even place the image in the right spot here. It, 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 it is a mess. It, it, it is. It makes the game feel like it's time to go by gun. That, that, that's what I keep saying. It, it, it is. It feels cheap. It, it, it feels rushed. It doesn't feel professional, which is a shame because I like the content drops. Even if a part of it is fucking drip feeling bullshit. I just need some polish, man. It, it's getting real bad. But especially when they fix the Switch port, by, by the time I got it, got it, you know, December time, for Season 3, they, they'd fixed the performance issues and what the game. So it's just visual bugs, and they've been working hard, clearly, at fixing the visual bugs, and then update drops, and more stuff breaks, and it's... It's just, it's just fucking unfortunate. It's just ridiculous. People need to criticise us more, but people are too busy fucking whining online about cameos and not having fucking Jade that, you know... Biss isn't complaining about as much. Hell, remember the fucking... Um, the desync issue? That came with an update. That came with an update as well. So, so many big game-breaking glitches, they pop in with these updates, and it's just unacceptable. It, 
it, may, it almost makes you dread an update because it's like, oh, what did they break this time? And it's not, it's not me being hyperbolic. Every fucking update breaks something. It, it, I genuinely don't get it. I don't know how stuff breaks. Takeda on the Switch port has like a ponytail for some reason. And it, it looks fine because it looks just like a different hair model. But that's clearly not what it's meant to be. So how's that happen? Darius's beard is growing out. I don't know why. How does that happen? How does that accidentally happen? Right, like, like I, cause it's like going around the side like a normal beard. You know, you got the sideburns and shit. But he's meant to just have a goatee. This wasn't an intentional design change. So, it, like, there's stuff like this that happens. It's just like, how? How does this happen? How does it even break this way? How did it break in the first place? And how is it broken in a way that looks? Like an actual change. I don't get it. I really don't get it. But it is frustrating because each each update as a Switch player, nothing's even breaking for me. Not like Xbox. Xbox stuff is actually just becoming unplayable. And you get a 120 gigabyte update for some reason. I don't know why Xbox players got that for an update that just broke two of their characters. But they did. They got 120 gigabytes to install. Very fun. The worst time for me on Switch is just, oh, there's some more fucking visual bugs, of course. And it's a shame because the, the, the port looks fine for a Switch port. The issues just come at all the visual issues, and then they fix the visual bugs, and then more show up. Because the updates changed it. Like last season, I did a big old rant, and it's still here. Not as bad from what I noticed. However, I haven't been playing as Melina, where this was like really prominent with her teleport thing. And I think that one's still there. They have properly fix it, but they changed the blood textures to splat to splatter on the character more, um, and it just made a mess of the switch models. Also, I don't like that anyway because like this bow damage, it's just lazy blood stars. It's not, it splatters. It's not a cool look, right? The, the blood in this game looks like shit on all versions. It's not just the switch version, but the switch version especially like it, it just covered a model for some reason. Um, and I think that's still there for certain moves. And it's just like, why did you change that in the first place? No one needed more blood, right? Like, like it, it was fine. A, a big charm in this game is you dialed it back a bit. You fucking settled down on the on the over top gore. You found a balance, and it's like, oh no, no, we gotta did this fancy pie you just got <laughs> cover it in red paint. Like, wow, yeah, real cool fucking feature, and it's just still in the game. They haven't reverted it, but like. Come on, uh, fix it, and I think they are. Because I don't think Homelander's throw does it anymore. I've seen it with Ferra, Ferris throw. She just covers herself in blood, although that one I kind of like. That one's kind of fucking savage. How, like, she just lets blood pour on her. I don't think it's meant to cover her that much, but that one's where, that one's like, fine. That one's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, a lot of instances, it just looks buggy. But yeah, I like the seasonal pants. And also, Quan Chi is the Titan boss. I don't even have a Titan boss, so I'm gonna have to get prepared in invasions for the for the pyramid to show up to get both the Havoc and Quan skins. Uh, it's very sound to get. And also he has gold palettes. First DLC here to get some gold palettes up in here. Check this out. Fucking beautiful. I'm very curious how this will change his um his gear, the glowing gear. Does he get gold glowing gear? Because that would that would be insane. That'd be super rad. Quan Chi for a DLC car so has the best customization in the game from like just eleven gear pieces uh, if you have to do, if you have the daylights gear and now he's got his alts. He's still missing the extra colours for his you know light costume because for some reason since last season because they need they don't have enough seasonal packs they just throw in skins they haven't drip fed yet like you have like Quan Chi or the darkness skins that aren't getting a season. Um but it's cool to get. We'll have the full order that has Quan Chi set, which is cool. And again, I think it means Ermac will be coming at some point. As well as, of course, the extra colours. So, I don't like the whole drip feed process, but if we get everything eventually by, by the time, you know, stuff adding new content, I won't really mind. Because at the end of the day, you'll have the content. It is dumb, though. Um, something I also find dumb. It's cool, but it, why? Why would you do this? Puggles is a cameo. Quan Chi's Hellback called Puggles has a cameo. And we saw gameplay of it um, from a Mesa's mod. Um, 
making Fuggles playable. They've got their own portrait here, which is a very good good look at Puggles. It's nice to have a good look of a pretty good model for them. They are a cameo, and they're like a stance cameo where they sort of fly around and you get like four different attacks of them, it seems. But it's only for the Titan boss, and it pisses me off because this, this is a cameo I actually wanted. I, I was like, there's no way they do it, but imagine a Puggles cameo with Quan Chi. That would be a whole lot of fun. You put the Hellbat variation in, as a cameo, and that'd be fun. But it's an NPC, and uh, that fucking annoys me. Like, it's not like it's a complete cameo, of course not. But it has four attacks, so you might as well balance it out to be one. You know, it, it, it's, just, it's just always a shame. You get this NPC content. And this was a game that didn't have that until now. You, you had NPCs like Adam, but who the fuck gives, gives a damn about Adam? Who cares? That's fine. Puggles, though. Puggles is a cameo, we fucking rad. And you're telling me the Puggles cameo isn't even in regular invasions. It is in it is in a Titan boss, which the Titan bosses are really cool, and they put so much effort into them. I don't know why, because they only last four days in a random point in the season. And there's like no announcement beforehand, it just happens randomly. It's not even mid-season, it happens randomly at a random time. And if you're not at a high enough level, you have to miss it. It is a terrible system. I get putting it in later in the season, get people to come back to the game, but put it in the middle of the season and let it stay there. What is the point of having it last for four days? If it lasts the rest of the season, then more people will hop on rather than missing out and then going, oh, I won't play it. It is dumb. Why? Why have you made a Puggles cameo for a boss that will last four, four days? It will last four days, then it will go away. Two months later, it will show up again. And then four days later, it will go away for, like, years. It will go away for at least a year. Fucking why? I, I, I can't stand it. I, I love the Invasion bosses. I think, I think that the forced armor stuff can make them a bit unfun. They get repetitive when you have to keep replaying the same boss. For the past, which is no reason why making it last a few days is really dumb because I'm just gonna get out of the past at once, and that kind of takes away the fun of the boss fight because you're making me play it like nine times in one sitting. It's it's a shame because they are recall really cool. a lot of effort goes into them. more than they go into the tower shanks and boss. The invasion boss are probably my favorite bosses in the franchise that aren't Onaga. Like, that, that's how much goes into them with new original moves, and now here, an, an NPC cameo. And it's like, this is stuff that, you, you, because of how they design it, you can't really incorporate into a, a regular game. But it's so dumb. And, I and the least they could do is just make these bosses available in, like, the, the gateway mesa. You know, you just give us, like, this gallery of all the bosses. There's so many bosses as well. There would be a lot of content there for, for people who like to fight the bosses. I, I feel it's quite wasteful. It, it is quite wasteful because these are good bosses. You do And you do all these boss-specific stuff and then they, they only last a few days or they last a season and go away. It's, it's a real shame. It is a real shame. I... The story expansion will come in some wacky cameos, is my expectation. I don't expect many. I expect two or three, quite frankly. We know pretty much that Harumi is going to be one, which, straight away, that is a very wild cameo choice. I reckon Orin is another one, which that establishes like flying creature stuff. Throw in the Puggles cameo while you're at it. That is pure copium. But technically, the Puggles, Puggles plan has not been revealed yet. It's been found in files. You could, with the uh, with all the enhancements tonight, you could also go, oh yeah, this Puggles cameo is coming. They will be obtainable or whatever. They'll be in the DLC or they'll just be obtainable. They won't do that. But like, why do you put this effort in? Why? I fuck it. I, I I am a big Puggles fan. I, I think I'm like one of five people actually bothered about this, but it will be very cool. And and I, I think it's a big waste of an opportunity here. Um it is a shame. One more thing, they added this funky little Daylight Satara palette. 
switches off stamp palette, which is cool. A very odd number, and also it goes in front of her base colors, so it's actually the default palette. And the play two colors are literally her default skin, the, the new era costume, which is weird. It, it's it's cool to get this pan that was seemingly scrapped, right? I didn't expect it. I didn't really need it, but like, it is cool. It's a very out there color scheme. Also with the lightning wings, pink lightning going through the wings. Very cool. It, again, it's my favorite shop skin, I feel. I know it's I know it's a thousand, a thousand crystals, but it's cool. And this is a good bonus. A nice bonus. I, I, I do appreciate it. Um, it's cool to have it. Um, it is just a bit weird. <laughs> it's a bit random. Um, but it's nice to have. Now, before we get to the seasonal, not seasonal, it's the uh, item shop skins, the palette swap ninjas, let's talk about this. I'm fucking sick and tired of the shrine. I have ran about non-stop how this is the worst part of the game. It is so incredibly lazy. It could have been a crypt. It could have been a grid-style crypt, like Dead Nights or Deception. The classic style crypt. You don't need to do the, the action adventure crypt thing if you don't have the time to do that. But you could have taken all the content in the shrine because this, I mean, this skin is the only one that wasn't in the files at day one. Well, because the others are just story skins that were in the game at day one. All you have to do is add the old palettes, which certainly doesn't take much time. Um, and then they trip feed them. It was two skins at a time, now it is one, and this season just gave us a cameo skin for Kung Lao, which uses the same model as the main fighter Kung Lao, but you can only use the MK2 and MK3 skins on the cameo Kung Lao. And this is just an MK11 asset reuse. What the fuck? I don't know why Kung Lao is a cameo to begin with, that's a separate rant, but it is such an odd system, and like, why? Why is it only this skin in the shrine? And there's nothing else. You don't even get the combat card stuff dedicated to the DLC characters anymore. You have to play the Trial Towers. I miss the Homelander ones. And I'm pretty sure that's just unobtainable now. I can't imagine how they bring the Trial Towers back. So unless they put it in the shrine later on, that's, then it's gone forever. I'm sick of the FOMO bullshit. The one thing I'd like about the, the invasions was, oh, it, you've got like two months before the thing goes away. Except for the pyramid stuff. That one's only a few days. But like, and with the shop, stuff does come back. So... Nothing is like fully limited time, you miss it, it's gone forever. I guess the Twitch drop skin is that, but you can't even get them on Switch, so... Eh. It's... It, it's like, it's a, it's a fine system. But this, this is just lazy. There's nothing new. This is, this is the most newest thing, and this was in the shop fucking months ago. So they still managed to drip feed this. And again, it's just MK11 assets. Part of my cameo. And there's nothing else in the shrine. That's just six crunchy festival skins. Imagine if you don't own a DLC. By the way, come and leave this season. Fucking stupid rewards. It is all DLC characters. And the last tier is Ermac. But it's not the Order of Darkness version of Ermac. It's just a new era costume. Fucking why? Why you make me grind Combat League for DLC palettes? And I thought the tower was bad enough. The, the seasonal tower. It's... It is, it is very annoying. It is very annoying. There, there is stuff with this live service system, this and the glitches, that really bugs me. It really bugs me because you're still dripping one skin at a time, not even two now. You're doing that for skins in the game and all. We don't have the Wuxi skins properly because you're putting them at the end of the goddamn seasonal towers. They'll probably just be put in the shrine anyway, so why would I grind for it? You're putting put a shrine in in a year's time or whatever. Why would I go for it? And those skins we were shown in the gameplay reveal well over a month ago now. Not a month, a year. And they're still not obtainable through normal fucking means. This is all stuff that could have been in the crypt. Could have been in the crypt. And then you have the shrine as a separate thing that could have added actual post-launch stuff. I like this Kung Lao skin. It, it really annoys me how it's one skin at a time now. Because there's so much. There are the four Wuxi skins. Because, yeah, yeah, sure, the Johnny and Kung Lao ones are in the seasonal town. But it's only the base palette. And I assume they go put the rest in. And also because they've been pulling the base palettes for all, Union of Light Quan Chi, Order of Darkness Kenshi, and Order of Darkness Katana now. Um, Order of Darkness Smoke as well. They're going to put the rest in the shrine. Or they're going to slowly 
release them as free bonuses, which I did for the silver pallet of Order of Darkness Smoke. Very random. Also, the gold pallet of Order of Darkness Chat, Johnny, we got, but we didn't get the silver pallet. It, it, it fucking drives me nuts. You have such a simple drip feed system, and you can't even do that right. So you've got, so you've got Order of Unite and a Unite that light skin to do. Also, let's keep in mind here, you have Light Ermac, Order of Darkness Ermac. That is 10 skins already. We've got K Kalima, who's presumably going to be like a, a, a Premier skin, voiced by her voice, her Kalima, um, which is the uh, the Caravala ally, who is just an Atara skin, but has a different voice, so they'll probably have, they'll probably not have Megan Fox's voice. So I'm excited for that, that's another thing. That's 11 skins. Then you've got Festival Asher, which was put in the file, so she is very much ready to go. If she wasn't already, which I'm pretty sure she was. There's Festival Johnny Cage, which is a disguise on top of a skin, the, the bow armor skin that we also don't have. So that's 14. And there's probably something else. I'm trying to think. There's probably some other stuff. Let's be real here. There is probably something that I can't think of. There is, oh, Cyber Snoke. Ninja Mime. 16. At least 16 skins. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And you're, and you're going to release them one at a time. You're going to release them one at a time. I think season 8 is the last season. I'm getting to what. So after that, season 16, right? That's 8 seasons away. So you've got like three ways of repeating a season before we get everything at this pace. What the fuck? <laughs> like, you can't do that. Two was bad enough. Moving it down to one is just ridiculous. So fucking stupid. I the shrine is dog shit. Like like I, I, I will keep saying it, the shrine is so dumb. People say invasion replace script, it didn't. It's nothing like the crypt. It has chests incorporated in the map, but it's not invade it's not the crypt. Where you spend your coins to get rewards is the shrine now instead of the crypt. And it is so lazy when it's stuff still being drip fed. 16 skins being drip fed right now that we could have had at launch for all the pallets put in a, in a in a crypt. All this stuff could have fit in a crypt because there, there is a lot of pallets here. There's a lot of story skins. It's good bonuses. Um, and having that at launch would have really highlighted that this game actually has a decent amount of cosmetics because when you release when you released when there was like you, most characters didn't have order of darkness skins and the story skins weren't available. Most characters only had their default and their Union of Light all. Which seemed like a massive regression. Now that we're getting more of this stuff, which was in the game from the start, it's starting to become clearer that, oh, this game actually has a decent customization system. It's not on MKF's level, but it's more than serviceable. Oh my god, my throat fucking hurts from running about this. Um, let me go over the, the bringing shop stuff. I, that's, that, that warrants another rant, I feel. You got all, you got, you got all sorts of ninja stuff. You got, you're in confusion for rain, long overdue, and Ermac. Ermac has a talon skin, very cool. Um, with my spendings on Switch, I actually had enough gold points to get 500 crystals for free. So I just got this Ermac. I'll probably get the rain eventually, although... I feel like I, I want the Armageddon skin. I want to give him that and I'll get that because I'm not really in a desperate need to get rain skins compared to the other ninjas because I actually like all three of Rain's costumes and I think they're all really good. Um, and I definitely prefer them to the classic costume, I think. All three of them. Um, so I don't know from that one. The 95 movie skins are cool. It, it's nice to get. You don't see them. You never see them in a game before. So it's like. Oh, palette stops are actually exciting. I personally aren't getting any of them because I, I, I frankly think they're even more simpler than the UMK3 skins. So if I want them, I just, I'll just go for the more the more um, typical UMK3 skins. But they are cool and you get unique masks for each one. The smoke one's weird though. Big ass forehead. I don't know why he has a skin. Because obviously he's not in a movie. He's in Annihilation as a cyborg. So no human smoke at all. Very random, very random. I mean, I, I guess it's just a pallet swap, right? So I'll take it. I'll take it over not having a smoke skin, but it doesn't make me worry that they'll just do this for the other ninjas then, and they'll just keep the pallet swaps going for another wave. I think we're getting another wave because the UMK3 Sub-Zero hasn't happened yet, and Noob's coming out, so you'll get UMK3 Noob 
So I feel like they're going to do another season update dedicated to just palette swaps. And I, that is my worry, because I like, I, I, I'm fine with what's here, right? But it is like, your punk and microtransactions, it's four quid each, technically. Right? There's not a bundle to discount to get like a full set. So it's like, that is very cheap. You're recoloring to get more money. And it's also nostalgic. Like, like I've seen the effort they can put in. Look at the 3DR skin waves. Right? And this only really adds, like, it's the most new skins we've gotten in an update. However, it, it's palette swaps. It, it, the the 95 skins are actually new, even though they were revealed before season six. But, like, this is the first time you're seeing that type of skin. And then there's three palette swaps of it. Again, I don't know why Smoke has one. Other than they'll just keep doing, they'll drip feed more palette swaps at a later date, which I don't need. It, if we do Annihilation skins and crack on, but um, yeah, it, it does feel lazy. And I know they can dedicate seasons to more original, more detailed skins and just a great variety of skins overall. Because really, this is just them releasing one skin and then just changing the colors, right? It, it is lazy and they pass it off as more skins. <sighs> but we could have gotten like. Three more skins, really. When you consider the effort they could put into Season 4, which had Deception, Shao Kahn, Daylight, Shang Tsung, Daylight, Quan Chi, Deception, Sindar. I just want three of stuff. Um, and also, it, the imbalance is pretty clear now. Reptile, Sub-Zero, and Scorpion have four shop skins. Meanwhile, you've got, like... And let's keep in mind, there are, there are story... Not, story skins... And I've seen a lot of people saying Johnny needs one, even though he already has like the like one that um the, the actor guy who ruined his classic skin. That that skin counts as a shop skin. Um and he also has like a shitload of um story skins. So he he doesn't really need a shop skin. Um you could do a, like a daylight skin or just any other classic skin, I'm sure. But what I'm really thinking of is the ones who have no bonus skins beyond their, their base free costumes. New Era, Union of Light, Order of Darkness. And there's Garrus, which is a hard one to do because you don't have MK11 to go off of. Um, I don't think many people really care about that design. I take it. But yeah, doing that kind of designs, bring them into a game just one game later in a game that has less customization and then putting it behind a paywall seems weird. Order of Darkness Raiden just being. The worst Star Crane design and making it even worse was already bad enough. So maybe just do like like an original Garrus skin, uh, maybe. Um, honestly, Garrus probably doesn't even need much because uh, I feel like free skin. He's got three very distinct skins, which is quite cool. Um, I never really thought, oh, I need more Garrus customization. He has the weakest gear, unfortunately. I feel. Um, so I, I'd, I'd throw him a bone just for equality. Um, but what really confused me is Baraka probably arguably the most popular character in the game right now I see him more than any other character he's certainly more popular than Reptile I'd say and Reptile's getting so many skins here and he's got not one I, I imagine surely he'll get like a deception skin at some point when they do the next 3 Jack wave which might be next season um, I'll happily take that but it is like it does feel overdue right now and then you've got um Reiko, which I mean, there's only really one skin option for him, and the MK4 Reiko. You could do Armageddon Reiko, and I think that's frankly his best design. However, the, the new era costume is it ticks the boxes for what you want of a Reiko design like that. Like, if you put them side by side, there's, side by side, there's enough differences, but does it, does it warrant you know uh, charging extra for, for a skin that? Does the same aesthetic stuff? And not really. I'd probably get just quite like Reiko, but I think MK4 Reiko, you know, it's it's probably my least favorite design of his. It's still cool, and it would stand out a lot in this game. So that's one that I think he needs. Um, and then I, sorry, I mean, Tanya has one, but it's like a it's it's basically Earth from a costume, but it doesn't have a black and yellow palette, which I think would have made that design actually cool. Now I've seen edits of it. I've also seen they, they've done an Earth Realm character wave that made those costumes work by having color coordinated ones. I even got the Melina one. I even bought that one. 
because that's cool hair and the, the cool jacket and whatnot. Good old colours. Um, so yeah, it, it's I I I I want more detailed and varied skins. I want it for a greater pool of characters because right now I'm trying to just get one one premium shop skin per character. Like I'm not young every reptile because I mean he already has a skin like it. I know when they're as good, mind you. But I I got this the Christmas skin, which is still my favorite one of his of his shop skins. That was very fun. Um, and then, like, since there I got Daylight, since there I'm not going to get any more. Because okay, what am I going to use Daylight, since there are fucking MK3, since there I know the answer to that one. It's Daylight. Um, like, I, I suppose if you main a character, you're going to want as many skins from as possible. But it's like, and this is a DLC one, I, I, I don't really want to spend, spend more to get an extra costume. I've, I'm trying to get as much costume variety for each character instead of just doing it for one which i i suppose is ironic saying that when like should we be having to buy dlc costumes for paid dlc characters i i don't think so but it is what it is i guess um and i mean i have like 2900 crystals to earn still i think i think that's no what 1900 i think one, it's one or the other. There, there, there's, there's enough to get a few more skins, keep grinding them out. Um, and you know, when I get these free bonuses, and the story special will probably come with Kraken Crystals as well, I imagine. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll still keep having, I'll still keep earning crystals to be able to buy more upcoming shop skins, but I'll run out eventually, and that creates a problem. Uh, well, I have to, I don't want to spend money. To get any fruit skins, which I don't want to do, because that's kind of lame. Because and the reason the Minecraft actually haven't bothered me so far is there's a lot to earn, especially if you're, you're like me and you've actually played a whole roster where you're getting dragon crystals of each character. It, it, it's quite fun. You, you're getting a lot of skins for free, right? Which you would anyway with the combat pack. But like, I'm from something like a free to play player who doesn't get a DLC. They're actually getting a better deal because they can get a lot of skins for free. Um, 6,000 whatever crystals for free, that's plenty to get the essential skins you want. But I am a fucking freak who collects stuff, and I can't collect the microtransaction skins, I can't get all of them. And I'm also worried that, you know, I buy this skin, the character will get another skin if we could I prefer, and I wish I spent money on instead. That's another concern I have. It's what I still had with the ninjas, so I have UMK3, UMK3 ones like, 500 crystals sure but like every other skin's 500 crystals now so and like any other design will probably have more detail that isn't a palette swap mind you so i have you and capri smoke i have you and capri scorpion um i have you and capri ermac now i might get rain i don't know um noob will probably come i'll probably get noob sub so i'll pass on reptile pass on because i i don't i don't need the young capri ones the only reason i'd get all of them is for collection's sake which you know, I wish they just bundled them together, um, but but it, it, so that is like a, a genuine concern I might I, I have. Um, another thing that pissed me off is like I, I lost a hundred crystals due to uh, buying Daylight Sub Zero. Then they just sold the, the mask he comes with for free in season five. Fucking like just blatant false advertising. So that's another thing that still pisses me off to this day. Also. Can you lower the prices of those old skins to 500 and refund us 500? Like, I feel that just makes sense. Because now you've got something that's 1,000 or 800 crystals even. or a, There's 600 for NK3, so that was the last one. It was over 500. That's weird. Also, announcers are 1,000 each still, which is ridiculous. I don't think I'd pay 500 for the announcers. Maybe the Shang Tsung one. I don't know. But yeah, it, it's, it's sort of messy. And I I just want to focus on a great variety of skins for characters and, you know, just better quality. And, you know, I, I just... The power swaps is quite... Two ways worth of them now. I I, I think we can do better. Um, about the time, at the same time, it means I, I can save my money because I'm not going to get the 95 skins. <laughs> I'm not doing that, so... 
Yeah, it's a weird one. I, it, I think that the shop warrants criticism because I mean it shouldn't be in the first place. But it, it's content I like. It's not boring me yet, but it is. It is a bit of a concern. Um, I suppose overall, since I'm going to do a long video, I might as well just do a more extensive complaint about what I don't like about the whole life service system. Um, the bugs, the uh, the shrine, you know, the, the drip feeding bullshit, and the monster actions. Monster actions, uh, um, those those are the three main things that bother me. But yeah, the seasonal parts of the season, for, for you know, uh, season standards, I'm quite satisfied with them. Um, I saw the reveals tonight. The season had more content than any other one, you know, new moves and changes for cameos, and then Takeda and Ferro. Exciting stuff. The card pack is over. I, I'm quite satisfied. I'm willing to stick with this game. I'm willing to even buy the story expansion, which is quite shocking because I didn't even do that for MK11. Um, because that was yeah, such an egregious price thing. But I really do like this game. I'm willing. I'm willing to give them the money. Um, even though it, it's fucking greedy. <laughs> it's so. It's so. It's so ridiculous. But, I haven't. I, I I haven't read. I haven't seen. I check. I they they haven't. There hasn't been much controversy around. So it's like okay. I, I I'll give I'll give I'll give him money then. I'll give him money. <laughs> Just um. So I, I like the game. The license of it kind of pissed me off. I'm I'm quite excited. As, you know, get the reels, get the DLC. I really hope we get a full contract too. And then we just get a, a roster that feels complete for the first time since fucking Armageddon. Um, a roster that feels complete in that regard. And then, you know, you, you repeat the seasons at the end of time, and of course, it have not last a month or two or whatever. And that, that's a good system. That's a good system to keep it going. Of course, the worry is when the servers die. But, you know, for, like, however long it last, which it will last well, because MKX is still up, so... It will last, like, well over a decade, I'm sure, but... Um, it is a... It is a good system, I feel. It, it's just we need to get through. We need to get through all the all the, the bullshit drip-feeding of content. We need to get through all the bug stuff. We need to polish the game. And then things... I, I, I feel we're getting to a satisfying conclusion for this game. We're getting to a state where I think this will go down, for me at least. I know it's a very controversial game, and, and rightfully so, I suppose. Um, especially narratively, but I, I, I think we'll get to a place where it is like an all time round cave for me. I, I, like up there with the 3D round trees for me, personally, um, in my ranking. But uh, yeah. We'll have to see what they do. We'll find out about year two. The fact they're calling it year two again is also hopeful. I am expecting... So what I am expecting is season eight is Liu Kang's season. That feels like a conclusive one. They'll probably do Kung Lao as a time boss for them. Um, and of course, any of the Order of characters that missed out, they'll just get drip-fed through whatever means, I guess. We'll get them all eventually. We'll get all the skins eventually. It is a very dumb and worrying system, though, because it's very unclear when we get this kind of content. Um, it's just messy, but uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I'm quite hopeful for the future's game. I, I wanted to do well. I wanted to get all the content. I don't want Warner Bros to fucking fuck it over. You know, I, I'm hoping year two actually lasts another year because I, I want to keep you to that drip feeds. The, you know, it's not a drip feed because it, it does take the time to develop one character at a time, but you you get the characters coming in one by one. Because that's when Killer and failed. And Killer failed, they dropped a story expansion. Then it was just silence. A very overpriced story expansion, then it was just silence. Then an incomplete combat act too. And the game was dead. Right? And this doing a full combat act two can very much make up for that. And also in the base roster, two less characters and complete contact 2 will make up for that. We will end up having 32 MK characters, and then 6 guests. 
which leaves to a 38 character roster, which is an even number, one up for MK11, without reducing AMK characters, and then you also have the, the cameos on top of that. I think that's a satisfying amount. Um, again, I wish it was more. I wish our rosters were bigger. Um, but I, I, that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm hoping for. Even if the DLC picks are kind of mid. Um, but yeah, Season 8, you can see that's probably the last unique theme. There's not many left anyway. And since they've released all Dark Skins for everything except like Tanya and Rake were ones, I don't remember base ones. So I can't see them doing a ninth season that's like Tanya or Rake or theme. That's the conclusive one. That just would be weird. If we're going to do. That makes it they go up to 10. So, yeah, I think Liu Kang's is the last one. And then Season 9, they repeat stuff. And frankly, Season 9 might just be a star combat too. Which is why I feel they might actually reveal, reveal both DRC packs left. And if it's a year 2 reveal, Story Flash will be coming in Season 8, I imagine. It's a long wait, it's 62 days. It drops September, just a bit after the game turns a year old. I imagine we get the Story Flash in there. Um. And come back to could just start the, the season after, and of course I I think they'll have to uh, they will have to you know spend the next wave of seasons and so and even a wave after adding um, new seasonal paths to go with the DLC characters maybe do some extra maybe do cameos again I doubt that but again they'll be doing new skins they'll be doing more skins for that season theme which I I got. I think I'd rather that than doing more themes if that makes any sense. Because then the, you, you you can parse the game, right? You can parse the game, then you've got a cycle going. You've still got new content going for at least another year. And that, that just seems like a very satisfying state to have the game in. Um, so that's what I'm hoping for. But yeah, this season is pretty good. It's one I'm going to be playing a lot. I hope to do the seasonal power. I hope to master the cameos. And then the game probably becomes even more fun from there. Because I will be limiting my cameo pairings to... Oh, who I need to get XP for, which is the, the one pit for the character mastery for a completionist like me. Um, is I don't want to, I don't want to play this character who's maxed out because I, I lose out on XP. Um, but like if you get rid of cameos, then it's just focusing on fire XP, and there, there's not really a worry there. There's less of a worry, at least of course, you've still mastered the fighters, and then it's like, okay, I won't play as this fighter much then. Um, and I asked the whole rush, so but yeah, that's enough of my tangent. I like the season. I did I do a bit of tangent since there's a lot to cover anyway. Um I also have all a bit more combat deception now on a new laptop. The laptop I assume can stream stuff on a screen recorder. I can probably stream that game. Exciting stuff. I you know I'm I'm a pretty I'm a pretty satisfied MK fan right now. Um and I feel there's going to be some real dumb story reveals that are going to make me hate everything again. <laughs> but for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.